I wonder what life would be like if I didn't have to put up with a terrible XBMC PVR functionality and I could use, oh, I don't know, Windows Media Center. Let's look it up. Ah, it looks like someone has made a YouTube video. Oh, it's Ladies only a demonstration. The Who's this asshole? Uh, most blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Blah, Got it blah, closed. blah. Uh, blah blah. Oh god, an arrogant prick. Feeling like a talking about himself all the time. And back Puts adverts up on his YouTube channel as well. I've heard. Um, without the two, uh, impeding each other. Anyway, Alexander. You may have seen this demonstration. I want to watch live TV. Tuning in now. Isn't that awesome? What a guy. Um, so a lot of people have been saying, Paul, can you do a a, a guide for doing this? Um, and I said yes and then did nothing at all for about six months because I'm a lazy, lazy human being. Um, so for this tutorial you will need Event Ghost. Uh, if you wish to be able to do this with your voice you'll need XBMC, sorry, Robbers, you'll need Vox Commando. Um, you'll obviously need XBMC and Windows Media Center. Uh, if you don't have those things you're probably not interested in this demonstration, uh, so please leave. <laughs> Um, so, plan is to show you how this works. Uh, Event Ghost, um, I'm going to assume that you've seen some of my previous tutorials and you understand that this is a big list of things going on in your PC and this is a big uh, list of things that you have created uh, that will be triggered by these things happening on your PC. So when I press the spacebar, uh, my PC recognises that I've pressed the spacebar and does one of these things if I tell it do one of these things when I press the spacebar. So, um, yes, there's a proper tutorial for that here. Click a link. Um, if you've already been through all that uh, and you're just thinking, Paul, get on with it, all I want to know is how to switch between the two programs, then um, you will need to create this macro here. Uh, I've called it uh, the very catchy MCE launch device remote to change context to MCE. Um, that's uh, a ridiculous thing to have called it, but there we go. Um, so these two things are my triggers, so one is if I press the live TV button on my uh, remote control, which looks like this, if you've not seen it already, Logitech, uh, spelt very well there. So I have one of these, uh, and I create a little live TV button in this uh, window here, and when you press live TV, um, it uh, launches Windows Media Center over the top of XBMC. Um, and if I want to do it via my voice instead, I can actually say uh, launch live TV and it will launch Windows Media Center over the top of XBMC. Uh, I've done it in such a way as it will open Windows Media Center to the uh, either the live TV section uh, immediately or the guide section immediately rather than bringing up the annoying menu. Uh, that is very easy as well. I shall put in the description um, the uh, command line option that you need. Um, but yes, you can uh, you can have it go straight to live TV as I have done, or you'll see my demonstration actually goes to the guide. You can do that too. So uh, what it does is it stops whatever XBMC is doing. So if there is media playing, it will stop that media. Uh, in order to create these actions, um, please see my previous demo, but just very briefly, you just add an action to your macro, uh, and you'll need the XBMC2 plugin installed already. Uh, so let's just show you that quickly. You just go add plugin, search for XBMC2, uh, and then hit OK. It will put XBMC2 in your plugins, uh, and then using that plugin, you just go add action, uh, find your plugin XBMC2, uh, find the action that you want to do, um, and put it in. So the action that I chose was XBMC2 stop. That just stops any media that's playing, uh, and then starts program. That's uh, an action that should already be installed without you having to put any plugin in. Uh, and that action is under system, start application. Uh, I think it's start application or stop. Oh, yes, it is start application. Uh, and then the executable in here, you would just put in whatever um, the address is of the the thing that you're looking for, the, the URL on your PC, if you like. Um, so you want to put in there cwindowsehomehshell.exe because that is where your Windows Media Center is located. And then the command line option uh, I'll put in the description will start Windows Media Center straight into Live TV without doing the annoying um, startup screens. 
Uh, you can leave everything else as it is and hit OK. Uh, I've then told it to wait five seconds. Dead easy again. Add action. Uh, event ghost. Wait some time. And then tell it to wait five seconds. Uh, find window eh shell.exe. Again, dead easy. Window. Find the window. Uh, you can just choose it. So if you open uh, Windows Media Center, you can then just choose it from that list. Uh, bring to front. Again, very easy. Add action, bring to front. So all that does is it tells you uh, the window that you just found, bring it to the front. Uh, wait two seconds. Maximize that window if it's not already maximized. Uh, maximizing the window is very easy. Uh, maximize. So it will just maximize whatever window is at the front at the time. Um, Windows Media Center is probably already maximized. It won't look very seamless if, if it isn't. Um, and then I've got this enable exclusive command here, which just says uh, enable Windows Media Center functionality so that when I press the play button on my remote, it doesn't start playing something like an XBMC in the background. It starts playing uh, whatever it is. Um, on the in, in Windows Media Center so when I pause and I play and I fast forward and do all those things it will control Media Center instead of XPMC um, so all you do for that is you just put all your MCE commands in a folder all your XPMC commands in a folder and you just say enable the Windows Media Center functionality and disable the XPMC functionality I haven't had to say disable um, exclusive so if you look at this it's enable exclusive and then you just choose your folder I haven't had to disable the exclusive list XBMC because I have something that does it for me automatically. Uh, basically whenever Windows Media Center is on top it will disable XBMC automatically. Um, you can you can probably figure that out for yourself if you need help doing that let me know. Otherwise you could just easily just add another uh, disable exclusive which would be add action uh, event ghost disable an item and then you just disable the folder so not overly complicated so far um, you need to kind of do the reverse of this uh, for when you want to switch back to XBMC um, so you would have it do uh, where have I got that one of these things disables Windows Media Center uh, closes off things like the radio player um, and basically I just have one macro that just closes everything that I don't want uh, whenever I say switch back to XBMC so if I say switch back to XBMC it will uh, close off Windows Media Center or at least minimize it um, or it will focus XBMC I'm not sure it actually disables Media Center altogether because I like to have both running in the background really so that it's they start up quicker um, so actually it will literally just focus the XBMC window when I say launch XBMC um, it will uh, also close Radio Shore, that's my radio program, um, because whenever I say switch back to XBMC, I want it to stop playing the radio, if that's what it happens to be doing at the time. Um, and it does it does various other things as well. Oh, it closes Chrome. Um, this is because I watch basketball via uh, NBA TV through Chrome, and when I say switch back to XBMC, I want it to close that as well. Uh, so it closes Chrome, closes Radio Shore, and focuses XBMC instead of Windows Media Center. Uh, it also does MCE stop, so it stops playing whatever is on. So if it's watching live television at the time, it will stop live television. Uh, in order to do this, you'll need to add to the plugin uh, MCE. Again, just configuration, uh, add plugin, and then find the Windows Media Center one. Uh, so then you just go add action. Uh, find MCE and then find stop and that will just stop the television from playing media uh, when you switch back to XBMC uh, so a quick demonstration of this let me just um, if I'll just do it with my voice uh, I'll show you that in a second Alexander Alexander uh, I want to watch live TV preparing the television Volume set to 15. 
Look at the thickness of the I'll have to minimise this because of uh, stupid Windows this Media Center's so black cool. screen problem. I absolutely adore it. You can see that's this now playing live TV. In about, and if I say go Alexander, like 150 of these or Alexander, I'll get three of them are sold. Switch already. back one to, to XBMC. Launching. <laughs> you see, it just launches XBMC over the top of Windows Media Center and it stops uh, Windows Media Center from playing. So, really straightforward. Uh, to be honest, it's not quite as magical as it might have first appeared, as with most things that are technological. Um, so, yes, normally obviously they would both be maximised and it would look far prettier, uh, but you can see exactly what's happening when uh, when they are not maximised. So let me just do that again. Alexander, watch live TV. Preparing the television. As always, Volume as set to 15. Not clever, very easy. Alexander. Switch back to XBMC. Launching. And you will see a black screen for a second there because what it did was it maximised uh, Windows Media Center because it recognised that it wasn't already maximised. Um, so I've got little minimise. Sorry, I've got little maximise options in there so that it will automatically uh, put Windows Media Center into full screen if it isn't already. So easy stuff. In order to do it with your voice. You'll need to create a uh, little macro in Vox Commando. Buy it if you've not bought Vox Commando. Buy it. Uh, it's not expensive. It's the only software you'll ever feel like you were glad you paid for it because it's the guy that wrote it is a is a sweetheart, such a good fella. Um, ignore me. Okay. So, in order to create your macro, you'll need to go to Edit as you normally would do. Uh, create a new group. Um, and let me just find. Watch uh, it would help if you spelt watch correctly. There we go. So I created this uh, Windows Media Center uh, group. I put in a macro, uh, and that macro looks like this. All it does is it sends to Event Ghost vocally launch MCE. Uh, and if you remember, that is this one here. And all it does is it performs that macro that I've just uh, described to you. Uh, it then says in his, his very sexy voice, preparing the television, or launching media center, or tuning in now. He'll choose from any one of those phrases. Uh, he'll play the wave, uh, acknowledge.wav from my sounds folder, which is the um, dee -dee -dee -dee, or whatever it is, a uh, different noise actually, it's the portal button press noise. Uh, it will trigger events normal volume level, that's just another uh, um, another macro in Vox Commando that sets the volume to 15 on my PC. Um, so little things like this are always helpful because if your PC is really loud when you happen to be doing one thing and you want to watch TV, you probably just want it at a particular level. Uh, VC go into standby so stop listening to me. Um, disable the group XBMC Simple Actions, XBMC Plugins, XBMC TV, XBMC Movies um, and enable the group Windows Media Center Common Buttons. This is the thing that allows me to say things like uh, show the guide and um, I don't know, pause and play. When I say pause and play I want it to obviously pause and play on Windows Media Center not in XBMC. Um, so this is why it disables all the XBMC stuff and it enables WMC common buttons. Okay, so uh, hopefully you've got all that. The event ghost send command you just get by going add action uh, and then event ghost and then send. And then whatever you type in there, sorry, whatever you type in there will be what it sends to event ghost. So in my case, vocally launch MCE uh, and you, you'll then see whenever you do uh, say that to your Vox Commando program it will appear in this list here and you can drag it into whatever macro you want so I've, I've demonstrated all this before I'm not going to cover off old ground uh, if you want a tutorial click here uh, for Vox Commando and for Event Ghost so yeah uh, in simple terms it's enabling Windows Media Center stuff disabling XBMC type stuff playing a couple of noises that make me happy in my pants uh, and it's telling Event Ghost to start doing its macro. Um, you can do a lot of the stuff that Event Ghost is doing in in Vox Commando directly if you wanted to just do it all via your voice. 
Uh, however, if you're like me and you have a girlfriend who is scared of speaking to computers, uh, not strictly true, she does actually speak to Alexander quite a lot nowadays, but before she would prefer to use the remote, and so I wanted to be able to use either. So the remote button press will do the event go stuff, and so will Fox Commando. Uh, so, you remember we said that enables a group, uh, that group is down here. Sorry, down there, WMC common buttons. So you sort of enabled the group, you can see this group is currently disabled. Um, so when I enable the group with my voice by saying I want to watch live TV, this uh, all these buttons become relevant. Uh, and these buttons, you'll probably want to get my XML for Vox Commando, uh, if I'm honest, because these things aren't there by default. If you've set up Vox Commando for XBMC, you won't get any of the WMC stuff. Uh, I had to set up two instances of, of Vox Commando, one for WM, uh, for Media Center, one for XBMC, and then I just actually imported it all into one window because I like a big cluttered mess. Uh, you could just have, I think, two instances of Vox Commando, but I've done it the hard way like I do everything. Um, so if I say play or resume, it will do the uh, WMC button press. It will also stop listening to me. So trigger event VC idle timeout, that's another one of my macros in here, which just uh, tells Vox to stop listening. Uh, so you've got pause, you've got stop, uh, you've got your up and downs as well. Um, so yeah, you'll need all these things uh, too. I don't think the XBMC up and downs control Windows Media Center in the same way. So you will need these things. Somebody is ringing me. I'm very popular I am. It's my mother, she'll have to wait. Sorry mother. Um, and so yes, up, down, left, right, skip forward, skip backward, these are all things that you're going to want uh, to have in your Vox Commando window if you want to be able to control Media Center with your voice. Um, so I shall leave the XML um, links in the description page for you, and I shall leave um, all of the Event Ghost uh, XML in the description page for you, uh, and in case you just want to do everything yourself because you're crazy, um, I will also leave uh, I'll also leave this for you in the description section, the command line option for launching Windows Media Center into live TV directly rather than the annoying menu. Um, so that's about it. If you've managed to follow all that, you are some kind of genius. I imagine you haven't. Uh, watch the video back a couple of times. Look at my other guides. Probably would be easier for controlling Event Ghost and XBMC and Vox Commando and all of those things. Uh, and use uh, have a look through my XML. That's always going to be the easiest way to do it. I've suffered, so you don't have to. Um, so download my XML for both Event Ghost and Vox Commando, and you'll be all set. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I shall see you next time.